Texas today, Andrew, to be the tops in Seton Hall history. She's the headliner in a deep, experienced starting five for the Pirates. Shaylin Higgins does a great job defensively, shoots it really well. Sydney Cooks is the best big the Pirates will have near the rim for this one. On the other side for Fordham, this is the starting five they have used for this entire campaign. It is anchored by Dingle and by Anna DeWolf, the number four scorer in the Atlantic 10. Then throwing Caitlin Downey, who's almost averaging a double-double at 13 points and nine and a half boards per contest. And then as Scott mentioned, Seton Hall, the roster top to bottom, bottom laden with seniors and grad students. And here we go, underway, inside the Rose Hill gym. Again, these two schools met at Seton Hall last November. The Rams won by 19 in that one, and they begin this afternoon with a Meg Jonathan hoop. Well, these two teams don't waste any time scoring, both putting up close to 74 points per contest. Park Lane in the air, in and out, and it's run down by Maya Bembry. As we expected on this end of the floor, Dingle guards Park Lane, who is 0 for 2 from downtown, and DeWolf is running for Fordham. Carpell to her right, Dingle to her left. It ends up with Dingle, and now Downey. And Meg Jonathan's got a chance for three off the offensive rebound. Meg Jonathan does a great job on the opposite side, weak side rebounding, the name of the game, using her power to the basket. Five quick points. It's Pinkney in the lane, a little bump, and that's an offensive foul. But Seton Hall, with some size, with Sydney Cooks at six foot four, you know, going up against Caitlin Downey at six foot one. Look for that mismatch. They want to do this as well. Take the ball away. It's Park Lane off the Pinkney steal, and she's got her first triple of the afternoon. She can shoot it, and Seton Hall does not want her to get hot from downtown. And a good hands by Park Lane intercepts the Wolf pass. Second straight Fordham turnover. Park Lane for three again, and this one's through. She's two of four from downtown. Jonathan hoists. Hagens puts it on the floor, gets right around Carpell, and drops it in. It's moves like that that explain why she's shooting 58% from the floor this year. Uh, yeah. Sound familiar? That's Kenny's daughter. Heck of a college player. Uh, Kenny was a one of the best high school players. There's, there's the three that Fordham's been waiting for. DeWolf hits it. And it levels this one early at eight. The answer on this end from Jayla Jordan. On every possession, if you get an open look, you can fire it up. Pump fake, then the release. No on the two for DeWolf. DePaw trying, but it's Hagen's the other way. It's Satterfield to finish, and she'll get a free throw. Start at Christ the King High School in Queens. This is Satterfield's third college, though. Off the giveaway, it's Hagen's school. We'd love to have you back. Now she's back in her home state of New Jersey, getting her MBA and playing for the Pirates. Story, great story there. You know, getting an opportunity to get back on the floor after a couple of years. Nice drive by Park Lane with the wild shots not there. DePaul rebounds, and it's Dingle again, heads up. If you've seen Fordham play in the past, and this is the first time this year, Underneath on the offensive glass. Out to DeWolf. Just grazing the rim. Rams remain way off target from downtown. Yeah, DeWolf's going to need to get hot for the Rams. They're opening up that right side. And there's a... When I was listening to Coach Green in that last huddle, she said that, girls, I really like the shots that we're taking. We're getting to the rim. Keep doing that. Keep driving to the basket. But she also said that as a team, they need... Cooks and Bembry are back in. Amari Wright is in for the first time this afternoon. Number 22 in blue. DeWolf driving. 
leaning and hitting. Dingle rolling, closed off by the double. Carpell is open, and she's got the three. Cooks in traffic, left it short, and Depa controls for the Rams. The most minutes in the Big East, just over 37 per, so. Time to make your substitution of your key players. You, you draw out the last minute, and then it carries you. Well, the way these two teams play, they, they're not overly deep, so they're going to have to give their starters some rest. Seton Hall's eight-point lead is gone, but they've got the basketball here in the final minute of the opening quarter. As expected, this one's been entertaining. Baines got cut off. Tough catch for Bembry. Blocked from behind. The senior from West Orange, New Jersey. Has the first one and the ninth best number in, in America. And Bembry misses them both. Carpell going one-on-one -on -one into traffic. Gets it up there. Jonathan and Cooks always plays good defense, protects the basketball, and has sprinkled in some decent scoring games this year as well. Shot clock is off, and for the third time in this opening quarter, Seton Hall called for an offensive foul. This one's on Hagen's for a moving street. Well, anytime you run a little bit of that weave, that dribble drive penetration, you're setting screens, there's a lot of moving parts, and... Florida was fortunate to get the ball back there. <laughs> Carpell threw it away on the inbound. Right on the drive. Nice back to her feet, but no shot yet. Wright's got it back. Hoists. And that is going to be on Carpell. Uh, shot goes up and just weak side. Didn't really see the basketball. Sydney Cooks has her first hit for Seton Hall. She's their second leading scorer, 10th in the Big East at just under 16 per. But a scoreless first quarter changes early here in the second. Caitlin Downey yet to get it going for Fordham. Dingle spinning away from trouble and knocks down the two. You know, and that, that allowed them to get inside and Dingle does a nice job. Cooks can hit that shot, missed it there. Rams with the pace. DeWolf gets in the paint. Extra pass finds Dingle, who will drive 12 to shoot. DeWolf the reset. Shot clock's at eight. Downey off the pick and pop. Has three. And they let her there. Well, this five out offense has given Seton Hall a lot of problem right now because of mismatch situation. And if Downey can knock down shots like that, you know, this, this could be a long night for Seton Hall. Park Lane gets the roll. He was pleading with the Pirates to stop this Rams offense. I, I, I agree 100%. And what happens is Downey sits on that top of the key, and there's a nice bust for Sidney Cooks. Pirates back on top. Carpell misses. Offensive rebound, Jonathan. DePaul got to the left hand, and she drops it through. Seton Hall is led by as many as eight in this opening half. Down one at the moment. Bembry on the wing. Knocks down the two. Oh, Park Lane, the handle, the give. She has eyes in the back of her head. She always knows where the open player is. Seton Hall by three. Now she plays defense, but Dingle's got it back and scoots in for two. I think that's by my count, unofficial. And we know that Matt does not necessarily do well. I think that's four total offensive, multiple moving screens, one little forearm shiver early in the opening quarter. Park Lane floating and hitting. Baines dumps it for Cooks, falling away for two. Michigan State, Mississippi State, and now Seton Hall. Eight to shoot. Dingle driving and scooping it in for two. They are a combined 15 and 7 through the first month plus of the season. 
Seton Hall already has been inside Big East play. They're two for two so far in the conference, including a win over nationally ranked Marquette. Park Lane gets the bounce, of course she does. We also have to take care of the basketball. Had a great point there. I mean, when you talk about playing better on defense, when you give up a lot of three-point shots, you're going to get back and Dingle starting things off right away here in the second. She got the hoop after getting a block on Park Lane's drive to open the half. Here is Park Lane. And now for Shaylin Pinkney. Both teams back to their starting fives for the third quarter. Started now seven in a row for Seton Hall, but she doesn't play a ton. Just 13 minutes per game. Saves to Downey. Quick pass, DeWolf. Jonathan finishes that time. Third F. Jonathan outletting for DeWolf. Not a kick ball by Hagens. Here's Park Lane. One on one with Carpell. Goes right at her and has a chance at back. First team all Big East selections. Comes up empty there. It's Dingle again. It's Jonathan again. And she'll get free throw. You get more opportunities to score buckets. Meg Jonathan, a grad student, was returned to the program during the summer. And they were happy to have her back. Still Wolf off the bounce from Dingle. Flood catches the air ball. Dingle tries the three and hits it. On Hagens, gives it up to Flood. Long rebound, Springs Hagens. Nice move, and the give up, and the easy two for Alec. The games that we've covered together, there's always a first. And, you know, I've known Tony Pizzell a long time. And so one of the members of his staff pulled her aside and said, be more aggressive, play like Lauren Park Lane. And since then, she's been leading this attack of the Seton Hall team and has contributed to... And they haven't lost since. That was the first win of their current six-game run. They talk about getting uh, re responding to criticism. You know, only if every player would, would be like that. Jada DePa off the give. Good hands by Hagens, rescued by Flood. Since Seton Hall got to that eight-point lead, either late first quarter or early in the second, Fordham erased it, and we've been basically even the rest of the way. Dingle, Caitlin Downey's one of eight for three points, and yet somehow Fordham is only down by one, and now even with Seton Hall. And Alesh comes in and creates whatever contact came, ensues. Yeah, came over the shoulder and then caught the arm. So free throw line. Bain's one of those five Pirates that has been to three schools now. On the sideline, you get caught up in games like this where you're playing one of the top teams in the Big East. Tough catch for Downey. Jonathan tees up a long two, and it's all nylon. They give up for Park Lane halfway through the shot clock. They run two at Cooks. She misses. It's tipped out to Hagens, and that's a nice finish from her. Shot clock and game clock are basically identical here, so Seton Hall can hold for the final shot of the quarter. They lead by one. They led by three at the break. We have exchanged leads again throughout this quarter, just like the second. Flood waits for Park Lane. Five, she goes. Stepping back and knocking down the two. Visit collectibleexchange.com to purchase yours today. Or you can be my partner, make your broadcasting debut in this building today, and get a nice piece of... There's just like that magical feeling. I played here in high school way back in the 80s. You know, I've been part of some college games here. What a great place. And Seton Hall's a little bit longer, a little more athletic, and that sometimes can wear on a team and break them down late in the game. They needed that to wolf the two. As Seton Hall settles into this possession, let's get an update on the Pirates from Maria. Yesterday, Coach Bozella told us that if... Baines has six points and six rebounds at the free throw. One of two for Baines. Dingle penetrates. No look for Jonasim. And off the pump fake, she's... Park Lane, little pull up over to... Yeah, such good elevation on those shots. 
That dingle pass didn't work. It's outletter for Park Lane. Colleen McQuillan comes back. And she's sniffing another right now. Fordham needs DeWolf or Downey to finally get hot alongside Dingle here in the fourth. Dingle holding 10 to shoot. It's DePod driving and gets the roll. Plus the fast season as a Ram, a St. Francis transfer. Last year's NEC Defensive Player of the Year and Most Improved Player, plus first team all conference. She gets all three, so Fordham down two. Baines into Downey and off the window. Earlier in the possession though, the ball came to Depa. She had a look from 10, she gave it up, which is not necessarily a bad idea, but she gave it up to Carpell, who's not a three-point shooter. That pass to Downey, DeWolf, uh-oh, Park Lane, a seven-point Seton Hall lead. And Park Lane makes... As Coach Green entered that huddle, she was fired up, but with positive energy. She sat her team down and said, listen, ladies, we need to talk on defense and keep up... And then missed badly, and here's Seton Hall. This is their largest lead of the afternoon. Up 10 with the ball, 3.50 to go, and DeWolf. Two. This game, thinking, and I guess it's still possible that she was going to set Seton Hall history here today. Going to be in the Big East this year. Fordham needed a three, didn't get it. Alesh pulls it down for Seton Hall, and they can build now on this 12-point edge. A year ago... Fordham got up early on Seton Hall. Pirates rallied on their home floor, got within one late in the third, and then the Rams compete with the Yukons and, and St. John's, who's sitting at 10-0 right now. But, you know, they've already not yeah. given credit to this Fordham team. This Fordham team is going to be around when you start getting into March. But Park Lane's been better, and her team is up by 12, up by 10. Very struggling. They were 8 of 10, 3 of 7. Dingle takes it away and drops it in. Seton Hall being patient. DeWolf knocked it away and kept it in, but only to Bembry. The shot clock reset in all of this. Fordham is livid on the sideline. Dingle gives the foul. Well, I'm trying, yeah, Scott. Really well. Lead to the shot clock reset, but... They did. Fordham's bench flipped out to no avail. Well, maybe you're bringing in better players. You're bringing in the right recipe of success. But you got to try to make it happen. You got to try to coordinate those team players. It's it's not easy. They kind of finally now have the complement of players. They were excited it's going to pay off in a seventh consecutive win. Uh, you know, with all the grad students that are transferring, it's you know very difficult. Teams are doing it. Players are doing it. Coaches are doing it. So it, it's got to be working. Seton Hall just gets it in. Park Lane escapes. <laughs> Hagen's got time and space in the front court. Dingle was holding Amari Wright's arm. That didn't bring a whistle. Down eight. 128 to go. Wright misses. Pushed the ball. Tried to get into the paint to kick it out. Dingle turns on Hagens. The bounce is kind. DeWolf for three. A three-point game, a full final minute left. Seven points in a hurry for Fordham. Park Lane bouncing a lash. Has it dropped through? Carpell has got to get it in. It's to Downey. Oh, and Wright takes it away from DeWolf. Jonathan gives the foul. Now Wright also missed two free throws a moment ago. Hits this one. Wright gets them both this time. Fordham's got to be quick, down seven. Dingle forces her way to the reverse for two. 
Seton Hall able to advance the ball because of the timeout. Hagen's triple team tied up. No, it's the arrow, but they would not have been at the line right now. Almost time to fly the Pirates. DeWolf on the step back. Jonathan Dingle. It's three. Again, it'll be right to inbound from her own bench. It's into Hagen's. And a quick whistle again. Hagen's back at the line. Just hit on two. And now she's three for three here in the final seconds. Best free throw shooting team in the Big East. Flexing its muscle right now, trying to get to the finish line. Four for four for Hagen's. She's into double figures. Leads back to six. Final eight. Dingle, three over a lesh. Wright's got it. And Seton Hall's got the win. They hang on by the skin of their teeth here in the final.